So in the last video, we got everything hooked up. We've got our index.js file here and we're outputting to disk. So you might be wondering, okay, well, you've got all this set up. What's the point? Let's get into it. So in my HTML, I'm just going to create a quick little app here. Um, so button creator, and we're going to make a form that has text input titles text and a um, type equals submit button and we'll do submit so we've got some HTML here and at the bottom here I'm gonna link a script to this dist forward slash main JS so this is going to point to the file that gets generated. Uh, just to show you that that works, if we go ahead and open up our HTML here, we got stuff going, and console log hello. Um, cool, but not super impressive, right? So let's make this a little more, um, a little more interesting. So inside here. I'm going to grab the form and I'm going to add an event listener to that form when it gets submitted. And I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a function here, but I'm not going to make that function here in this file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call it utils.js and I'm going to define that function here and we're going to export it. So I'm going to export function, create button, and it's going to take an event as an argument and we're going to prevent default and um, Now that I think about it, I think I'm going to have some trouble. No, I should be okay. Inside here, I'm going to do const input element document dot query selector um, input. And we're going to grab that value input element or say const value equals input l dot value and we're going to set the input to blank and then we're going to Yeah, I worry that I'm not actually going to be able to get the value of this input, but let's see if I can get it to work here. So, const button equals document dot query or create element button. And then we'll say button dot text content equals the value and then we're going to just append that button into the HTML. So we'll uh, make a main tag here. Main. And we'll do main element dot um, And button. great. Okay. Now in our index.js, we're going to actually import that function. So import create button from utils. Um, and so we did this before with native modules, and we had to, you know, specify that it was a module and a script and whatnot. But now that we are 
Um, in Webpack land, we don't have to do that. We actually get uh, a little bit of night, night. We get a few niceties here. We don't have to specify the file um, file extension, and um, and we don't have to go into the HTML and notify these scripts because once this runs, uh, JavaScript or Webpack, I should say, is going to basically glue all this together. Okay. So I've gone ahead and run it. And now if we look at our main JS, we get a little more interesting of a, uh, of a thing here. We've got this, uh, we've got this use strict here and this big long line, this one single line function call that's executing a bunch of code. And essentially what Webpack is doing is it's reading these files and generating this code. Um, so all the imports kind of come together uh, and um, it's also going to make it take as least amount, the least amount of space as possible. So it's doing what's known as minification. So that makes for a very small file, which is good for the internet because um, it takes, as you know, probably it's, it takes a lot less time to download uh, a few kilobytes versus a hundred megabytes. So that, and that's definitely not the size of this file, but it, um, all that matters in this in the scheme of things so by using webpack webpack by default is going to give us a performance gain um, and now if we go ahead and try this out let's see if it works um, submit oh good it actually all worked out cool so hello goodbye and So we've now created a build system. Our main JS is generated from our index.js, which can be split into these files. Um, rather than before, where we were only um, we were only we were having to kind of bring in all the scripts uh, into our HTML and say that there are modules. Um, Webpack's kind of handling all that for us. Webpack's just saying, hey, I'm gonna take all that and glue it together into this dist folder, this main JS, and then our HTML just uses it and it works. Um, but the real power this is gonna give us is the ability to use NPM modules that are uh, that um, in a much easier way. So in the next video, we're gonna see how we do that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.